Hi everyone, my name is Simon Mitrovic from Optimized Accountants and in this video we're going to be talking about stamp duty land tax on residential property and we are going to look at two cases of law that really help us to understand whether you can get a reduction in SDLT on properties that are deemed to be uninhabitable and let's be fair, uninhabitable is a property that you could not live in um, even if you thought you would get a property below market value would you really want to move into that property? Probably not. So you're going to have a lot of work to do. But that means that there's going to be a reduction of a stamp duty land tax as well. So that's a good thing, right? And um, so, but, but how much? And that's the thing to talk about. If you want to discuss our services, feel free to do so. You can um, book a call with us using the code YouTube15 to get a detailed tax conversation about your situation. Or if you want a new property tax accountant, then feel free to click on that as well. Um, we do have a stamp duty land tax calculator feel free to use that the link is in the description box below as well and if you do need tax advice in regards to a property that you've purchased in the past then feel free to use that qr code and we'll sure to be helping you but let's talk about banded and higher rates first of all there's different levels of stamp duty land tax that you need to think about there's the normal banded rate for residential from 0 to 12 percent based on the property value there's a 3% surcharge. So if you're buying a property in your own name and it's your second property, then you pay 3%. Additionally, that 3% will also apply if you buy a property in a limited company. And then if you're a foreigner, you have a yet another uh, surcharge of 2% to pay. So any foreigners that will think about moving to the UK, please feel free to wait until you get to the UK so you don't have to pay that 2%. Even if you have paid the 2% and the 3%, um, there are ways of getting that money back, especially if you bought that on your home. Okay, so let's talk about stamp duty land tax rates. And we're talking about residential rates as well as non-residential rates. So feel free to take a snapshot of that. Um, if you want to write it down, feel free to write it down, but capture it in some way so you can refer back to it. It's a nice snapshot of comparing residential property and non-residential. Non-residential being uninhabitable properties. It also includes, of course, offices, shops, a flat above uh, a shop as well. So there's a bunch of uh, types of properties that fits under non-residential, but we are focusing, of course, on non-inhabitable properties. And the nice thing about that, if you look at the, uh, the 250,000 band, we're looking at commercial properties between 150,000 and 250,000 of 2%. Um, when it comes to 250,000 for residential, there's 0%, but you'll have the 3% uh, surcharge or the two percent uh, high rate. Once you go over two hundred fifty thousand, then all of a sudden you're paying the five percent, the three percent, and the two percent, which is then quite significant, ten percent straight away. There, um, it can go up to fifteen percent um, beyond nine hundred twenty-five thousand, and even more obscene beyond one point five million. Now, when it comes to non-residential properties, you know above two hundred fifty thousand, it's just a flat rate of five percent. So. It's quite an interesting perspective to reduce your stamp duty land tax based on uninhabitable properties. Uninhabitable properties and stamp duty land tax, what does it really mean? And I want to really cover this off. So this is per section 116 of the Finance Act 2003. Uh, a residential property is a building used for suitable use as a dwelling where you live and a land that forms part of a garden of that dwelling a property which does not meet the conditions is a non-residential property so if you can't live in that property then it will be a non-resident property therefore you'll get lower stamp duty land tax rates basically uh, if you need tax advice don't feel free you know make sure that you get the qr code there and feel free to book a call uh, with us and we'll help you out with all of this a two sto a story of two halves here uh, this is two cases, and this is really interesting. So when this came up in 2023, it was like, oh, no. So the Mooden case versus the Bueller case. So I'll refer from Mooden and Bueller all the way through going forwards. Uh, if you are um, a foreigner buying property, make sure that you get the very best currency exchange rates. They are as QR code for that. I've made mistakes of using the wrong uh, mechanism to exchange money, like banks. So don't make that same mistake. Use the QR code to get the very best rates. Okay, so talk about Bewley now. So in Bewley, this is 2019 case, the first tribunal ruled that higher stamp duty land tax rates does not apply to the purchase of a buy to let property that is too dilapidated to be considered a dwelling. So we're talking about the condition of a property. It's not livable, therefore it will not be uh, residential rates of stamp duty land tax. Indeed, it will be non-residential rates. 
looking at the evidence uh, in front of it that this property failed to the suitability test for residential property suitability test i didn't even know this such thing um it had been vacant for several years the deterioration during the vacant period resulted in the removal of heating copper pipes and floorboards asbestos was present whose removal would require a virtual dismantling of the property Further surveys and valuation reports describe the property as derelict bungalow. So we had to think about this now. So it's not just the case of, well, it's not livable. This thing was going to be taken down to a, a significant degree. So therefore, if it's land, it's going to be clearly non-residential rates of stamp duty land tax. Now let's talk about Moodon. What Where does we go with this? And it, people would be relying on the Bewley case to say, well, actually, I can't live in it, therefore I can get some duties land tax. Well, I think that's a failed uh, mission now because of this latest case in 2023. So this year, when I'm re recording this video, um, the Moodin case uh, described the condition of the property when he went to visit on the afternoon of the day of completion. He said the points of entry being broken into, into both at the front and the rear. The kitchen was unbearable smell it had an unbearable smell all the kitchen units and appliances have been damaged and none of the utilities worked and you could almost say well we can't live in the property right so yep non-residential rates king that's a nice and easy win isn't it straight into non-residential rates well hold on not, not so fast uh, the tribunal reviewed the existing case law which well, they would have looked at the beauty case in this area and emphasized that the bar was set very high if an argument that the state of the property was made it unsuitable for use as a dwelling was to succeed. What? Uh, the judge remarked, I consider that a building which was recently used as a dwelling. Okay, so the Bueller case was a long time vacant. This one was not so, it was used as a dwelling, has not in the interim been adapted for another use and is capable of being, being used again. Will count as a dwelling. What? what? This is not livable now. So, you know, are they, they're saying, it could be livable again in the future, <laughs> but this surely goes against what the uninhabitable rates of stamp duty land tax was all about, right? Not so, according to this court. Even though it's not ready for immediate occupation, note this, uh, unless the reasons why it was not ready for immediate occupation was so fundamental, being radioactive. Wow, that's quite specific, isn't it? Quite, it's an imaginative judge. Or a high risk of collapsing. Okay, that's fair. Um, that the work required to put these problems goes beyond anything that might ordinarily be described as repair, renovation, or fixing things. Big, big difference. So if you're now relying on the uninhabitable rates for some duty land tax, be careful. Um, the, your, your solicitors may go along with you to say, yeah, okay, fair enough, oh, you're relying on the Buda case. And then HMRC make an inquiry, it is you that has to pay all the, the penalties and the taxes. So not your solicitor, but you, especially if you're raising the point about Bewley, they don't have to uh, do further research. They could rely on what you want to do and it's your responsibility. On that basis, the claim for relief was refused and stamp duty land tax was payable at the full residential property rate. Hmm, okay. As the judge emphasized, it is very rare for a property which has previously been lived in to be such a state that it's no longer suitable as a dwelling. Really, really interesting to say the least. So be careful when you're thinking about buying a property that is now run down and you are going to try uh, to get the residential rates removed. Uh, so you, you pay non-residential rates, which is much cheaper with this recent tax court case.